Okay, so chapter three, lesson five. It really is the easiest concept that we could have in this entire book. However, I preface that with saying, in the past two years when I tell people that, or they look at it and I tell them the main objective of the lesson, you know, that, that main theme, then they just, oh, I got this, and they run with it. And then building upon that in the future becomes very difficult for them to do because they don't listen to the lesson. They don't get exactly what I was talking about. So please pay attention as I go through this. We're going to talk about the Statue of Liberty. Well, what in the world does the Statue of Liberty have to do with that absolute value thing? Well, I've never been there myself. That picture doesn't really show me how big it is until I start looking at all these little dots or people down there. So that thing's pretty big. You can go on the top of the Statue of Liberty. I don't believe you can go into the arm anymore. I think it's been locked off. But you can go into her crown, and it takes 354 steps to get up there. Hmm. That's a lot of steps, isn't it? That also means that I have to go 354 steps now. Notice the difference between these two numbers. I have a positive number. I'm going to go up to 354. Now, sometimes we have the positive sign, and sometimes we don't, right? If it's not there, I know it's positive. So I'm going up, or I'm going across from my zero on my number line. On the negative means I have to be going down in elevation, or I'm going backwards from my zero. Once again, what's that have to do with absolute value? Well, if I'm talking about the Statue of Liberty, and I'm talking about how many steps that I go, if I just look, look numerically at numbers, I could say I don't go any steps at all. Well, how's that possible if I go to the top and the bottom? Well, we're going to look at integers here in the uh, next few lessons. We're going to be able to add integers. And when I add a positive to a negative, especially when they're opposites, I get zero. For example, if here is zero, and I take two steps forward, and I take two steps back, I end up on zero, don't I? If I wasn't looking at absolute value, if I said, well, I went up 354 steps to the top, and I look at the crown, and then I went down 354 steps, people could say mathematically that you went zero steps. But we know that's not the case. I know I'd be winded, may have to go to the hospital and you know have my heart looked at. So when we look at absolute value, the concept is this. Absolute value is the distance from zero. The absolute value, just like distance, is always positive. It doesn't matter if I'm going north or going south 600 miles. I'm going 600 miles, right? It doesn't matter if I'm going east or west. If I go 20 miles, I'm still going 20 miles. It doesn't matter. We don't look at it as positive and negatives. Absolute values is looking at the same thing. If I go from zero and I'm going up to 354, then I have a positive 354. But my absolute value is just 354 steps. If I'm going from zero and I'm going down, I'm going down 354 steps. I would say, well, that's a negative 354, and I agree mathematically that it is, but I'm talk if I'm talking about absolute value, it's just 354 steps. It doesn't matter if it's a positive or a negative. It doesn't matter where my elevation is. It's how many steps I took. Absolute value is this. It's always taking the numbers that we're talking about, putting these lines around them, that says absolute value, even though it looks like two black lines. And then just saying whatever's inside, make it a positive number. If negative 354, I'm asking for its absolute value, it is equal to 354. If it's positive 354, its absolute value is 354. Absolute value is always how many steps is it from zero, put the answer down as a positive number. It's just taking what's inside the boxes, making it a positive number. Anytime I have absolute value, whatever that number is, I'm just going to think, okay, so absolute value wants to know how many steps it is from zero. So that just means I'm going to take the number and I'm going to make it a positive, no matter what the number is. Whole number, decimal, fraction, mixed number, integer, any rational number. It's just going to become positive. Scenario. In 1934, a cargo ship called the Mahoican sank off the coast of Florida. Divers today can visit the ship at an elevation of negative 32 feet. Use a number line to find the absolute value of negative 32 feet. Well, let's see. So the boat is at negative 32 feet, right? So if I figure out where my number line, it only has two tick marks. 
So I know that that'd be 35 and 40. So it, that's about negative 32, not a precise number, and that's okay. The concept is knowing that that's negative 32 where the ship is. So how far down does she dive? Well, she would be diving at negative 32 feet, right? Because she's going from zero down to 32. But we don't say, well, I could dive at negative 32. That, that doesn't work. How many feet did we dive? Well, we dove 32 feet. That's how far I went down. I take my number and I make it an absolute value. I put those lines on it. So even though it's a negative 32 in elevation, the distance that I went, how far did I travel? Is just simply 32 feet. The depth of a diver is her distance below sea level because depth represents a distance, how far I traveled. It's never negative. Find the depth of a diver visiting the Mahalakin and explain how her depth is related to the ship's elevation of negative 32 feet. Well, the ship is at negative 32 feet in elevation, and therefore the depth diving, how deep I went, would also have to be in negative 32 feet. That's how far down she went. What is her distance then? Explain how the expression of negative 32 and its absolute value relates to the diver's depth. The expression shows that she dove down as a negative. So she went down into the water. That should make sense. That's why it's a negative. Being an absolute value, though, shows that she goes the distance of 32 feet. So when you talk to a diver, you could ask one of two things. How deep did you go? Well, I went 32 feet. As a diver, I know I'm going down. And I've been scuba diving since I was 19 years old. I know that that's going to be a negative number if I'm talking about a number line. I know what that's telling me. I could ask, well, how deep is the ship? How far down is it? Well, it's at a negative 32 elevation, so I know it's 32 feet down. Both of them tell me the same amount. The ship is 32 feet below sea level, and if I'm diving 32 feet, I know I'm going down. That's my absolute value. How far do I go? If you have both of those written down, you're going to go on. If not, pause the video before you continue. Now focus, please, 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 please focus. As we go through this very important concept, because we're going to be using it throughout the year. Whatever is inside the absolute values, is that number as a positive? That's the objective of the lesson, that you understand that. So whatever I see the absolute value signs, I take that number, put it on my answer line, and if it was originally a negative, I just don't put it there. I make sure the answer is positive every single time. A food scientist tested a new dog food on five dogs. Each dog's weight was monitored during the course of the test. The results are shown in the table. Positive values indicate weight gains in pounds. Negative values indicate weight losses in pounds. Graph the weight changes on the number line and then find their absolute values. All right, so first thing I have to do is graph those on the number line. Let's figure out that tick mark here. We got zero, one, two, three, four. So everything's divided into fourths, right? Okay, so we can do that. So if we're divided into fourths, then I have three fourths. That's my first one. One, two, three. Yep, got it. It's on. Negative five eighths. Ah, common denominator of eight. So that would have to be there's two for every tick mark, right? Since there's only four tick marks. So that's halfway in between. All right, so five negative. Means I have to go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, Oops, so it backwards. So it has to be there. Uh, let's see, negative one and seven sixteenths. I have to go to the one seven sixteenths. Wow. Okay. So that means I have to divide even the eights apart. So seven sixteenths. Well, halfway would be eight sixteenths, right? Because eight and sixteen makes one half when I reduce it. So we're just talking a little less than half. Ah. I can do that then. Oh, I forgot to talk about the absolute value. So it's going to go there. The absolute value, once again, is just simply what's inside. I write down the answer. This is a negative 5 eighths. It's just going to be 5 eighths. This was a 3 fourths. It's just going to be a 3 fourths. This is a negative 1 and 7 sixteenths. It's just going to be 1 and 7 sixteenths. All right. 2 and 1 eighth. I have to go over 2. And then that's for every two, right? The one eighth, so it's gonna go right past the two a little bit. It's a positive two and one eighth, so its absolute value is just 
Positive 2 and 1 eighth. We see that this is pretty easy. Hoping so. Negative 3 eighths. So once again, halfway in between. So from the 0, 1, 2, 3, it's got to go there. But a negative 3 eighths absolute value is just 3 eighths. Whatever is inside my absolute value boxes, those lines, that just make it a positive number. Explain how the absolute values of the positive and negative weights changes relate to the starting weights of the dogs. Well, I know the absolute value shows the total change in weight. So there was a change of three-fourths of a pound, and a change of five-eighths of a pound, and a change of one and seven-sixteenths of a pound, and a change of two and one-eighth of a pound, and a change of three-eighths of a pound. Those are all the changes. Now, if I want to know if it's winning weight gain or weight loss, then I have to know if it's a positive or negative. So if the original was positive, then I know it was a gain. And if it was a negative, it was a loss. There are some science tests that they do that all they want to know is what the change is. They don't care if it's a weight gain or a weight loss. So it just depends on how you're asking the question on what you're doing. This one says, find all integers with an absolute value of 7. So my answer for absolute value is a whole number of 7. How many possible answers are there? Hopefully, if we're following along and thinking about what was being said, we said, well, there has to be two of them. Because I know that the absolute value, if we're talking about zero, and I'm talking about going seven, just, I could go forward seven, I could also go backward seven, because that's what absolute value says, the distance from zero. So I know that if I go forward seven, that's my absolute value of positive seven. And if I go backward seven, that's my absolute value of negative seven. The distance from zero is what my answer to absolute value is. So if I'm told this is indeed the absolute value, what two numbers could it be or what could it be? It would have to be two possible answers, a negative seven and a seven. So both the absolute value or negative seven and seven have an absolute value of seven, seven steps from zero. No, sorry. Paula says that there are always two numbers that have a given absolute value. Is that correct? Can't be correct, can it? Hopefully you thought, no, that can't be true, because there is only one number that does not. That answer is no, because zero, it doesn't have an absolute value in a negative form. Zero is zero. If you have a tricky question where they're trying to trick you and they give you an absolute value of zero, it's just zero. It stays the same. All right, so this is what our problems look like for our homework. They give us an absolute value of negative 2. It says graph negative 2 on the number line. Negative 2 is blank units from 0, and therefore the absolute value of negative 2 is equal to what? So I have to do what it says, and it says to graph it. So I need to go to negative 2, and I'm going to graph it. That's negative 2. How many units or steps is it from 0? Well, it's two steps, right? And if it's two steps, then I know the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Whatever's inside the absolute value boxes, I just make it a positive, and that's how we do it. So when I look at it, a positive 6 is going to be 6. A negative 5 is going to be 5. A negative 11 is going to be 11. A, ne or a positive 9 is going to be 9. A negative 15 is going to be 15. Not difficult, right? Shouldn't be. But they do try to trick you on some of your homework. So you have three different styles of questions they're going to ask you. The first one, what are the absolute values? I want you to do seven and eight on your own, and then come back and check. So hopefully you only had to pause the video for like five seconds. Okay? So negative 37, its absolute value is going to be 37. And one and eight tenths, absolute value is just going to be one and eight tenths. Those should have been pretty easy. Find the numbers give or find all numbers with the given absolute value. So this is the answer and this is the answer. I want you to find the absolute values that are the numbers that it's talking about. So pause your video and come back and check. Hopefully that didn't take very long and you thought, okay, so if the absolute value is 13, then I know I could go backwards from zero and forwards from zero. So if I go backwards, that would give me my absolute value of negative 13 question and then I would have to go forward also, and that would be what is the absolute value of positive 13. So on these, there's two answers. How do I show my work? 
You don't. Okay? So you either get it right or you get it wrong. That, that kind of hurts our grade a little bit more because you don't get a chance of making extra points by showing your work. So this is why it's important to take your time and make sure that you do everything as precisely as you possibly can. So 5-6, you should have had two answers also. In 5-6, you could go to a negative 5-6 or and you could go to a positive 5-6. All right, so then what's this say? Well, algebra, we want to find the missing numbers or numbers to make the statement true. Well, this says my absolute value answer is 10, so what could be inside? Well, this is just like this. You do 17 and 18 and check your work. So hopefully on your answers you have, well, it could be negative 10, and it could be a positive 10. In the same way, the absolute value inside of here, it could be a negative 1 and 7,800s, and it could be a positive 1 and 7,800s. There's nothing difficult about this assignment other than people try to rush through it and they don't get that fundamental understanding. Why in the world do we even need to know this? Because, as we have said since the very first chapter we started with in Chapter 1, we've talked about the order of operations. And we're going to start seeing the order of operations having absolute values in there. I have to solve for absolute values, square roots, exponents, and parentheses before I do my other math, before I do my four functions. So now when we start seeing absolute values, we can say, oh yeah, it's just that number positive in the positive form. I can solve for those. I can solve for parentheses. Then I can move on to my multiplication and division from left to right, addition and subtraction from left to right. That leads us into our homework, and you know why now we're going to be doing it. So you have your lessons, uh, 169, 170. Um, take your time, just make sure it's right and get a good grade, and that way we help our report cards that are coming out on Friday.